one thing that's going to be the, one of the hardest things to ever grasp, it seems like. We all know it's here, the lights are on. Think about uh, life without electricity. Well, how do you use electricity this morning? Jose, he did it because he was on time, the alarm went off, right? You didn't hit snooze, you just got hit the ground running? No. Because I'm the new Jose, I'm here, always here on time. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Okay, but just think about the different ways you use electricity. And I can think back when I, uh, uh, when I was younger, I lived at two houses that did not have electricity. This is really a different world. Almost go back to caveman days in a way. You, when the sun goes down, you go to bed, and the sun comes up, you get up there. But I remember, uh, I was probably five or six, but I distinctly remember looking out my bedroom window and seeing the, the machine come in and dug the hole for the uh, power pole with it and put the ranch up by Yosemite and they actually put uh, that in. And everybody, you ever, uh, you've seen, heard the refrigerator? Anybody ever call that an ice box? Okay. Well, I remember when the ice man came and brought us up, uh, ice and we put in there. So we, we're kind of spoiled on that. So everything around us it relies on electricity there. We can't see it. And it would be really a drag living without it, wouldn't it, there? Mm -hmm. When the power does go out, now in my house, for instance, I have a well. So when the power goes out, I have no water. And boy, does that make my wife happy. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, electricity, it, it's, it, it's so fast. You turn, turn a switch on, and it takes a little time. You turn your headlights on in a car, and it takes a little time to do it. Because what's happening really is your electricity leaves battery positive. It's going to go out through a wire through your light switch, all the way through the elements of the light and back to battery negative. So when you turn it on, actually there's a little bit of a, a hiccup before the light comes on, but it, it moves so fast. It moves at 186,000 miles per second. Per second. Think about the distance there. Now this just blows me away. How many of you guys are interested in, in astronomy? Okay, really interesting there. You'll, uh, you'll read in the paper, it says, look out in the western sky if you have a great telescope you're going to see kind of a slight flash. And what they say is, you know, stars blow up, you know, they, they implode. And uh, so then this happens. And they'll say, look out here, and that star actually exploded 40, 40 light years ago. That just blows me away. It moves this fast in a second, okay? In a minute, how fast, how many, how long? An hour, a day, a year, 40 years. The universe is pretty good size, isn't it? It's hard to really grasp there. And that's the speed of light, of course. Okay, all matter is made up of atoms, okay? You guys, if you took uh, science in, in high school, there's a little game, a little song there on the different uh, different ones that you remember all these. What is there, like 64 different things and all? Why don't you? And uh, so everything's made up of atoms. Now, when you do atoms, Every time you do an uh, electricity class, they're going to talk about atoms to start with. And it's kind of important you. You've seen just a little bit there. Well, there's three parts to an atom. The first part, you have protons. And these guys live in the middle there, in the part of the nucleus. And protons have a positive charge. Now, in the nucleus, there's what they call neutrons. They live in there. Of course, the, you're going to, if you have four protons, you're going to have four neutrons. So this makes up the nucleus. But what we're concerned about as far as electricity goes is going to be these electrons. They have a negative charge and they kind of go around the nucleus in, in orbits. They call them balances there. We just talked about the uh, solar system a minute ago, didn't we? What's that look like to you? Solar system. Exactly. It looks like a solar system. This would be the sun, these would be the planets going around. Okay? Now, as I say, your, your protons have a positive charge, your neutrons have a, no charge at all, and the electrons have, have a, uh, a uh, negative charge. And ever heard a magnet? Held onto a magnet ever? You have your, your, pos, your uh, north and south pole. If you put together, we have two, uh, two, north, two uh, positive poles. What happens when you have to put them together? It, it's hard to put together, but it'll go apart. Flip the one around where you have a north and south, and it snaps together, doesn't it? So this kind of is a little bit about atoms that we need to talk about there. Okay. So what can happen here, you may have a, that in, in nature, things want to be balanced. An example of this is, if you took science in high school, and what they did with me, they had kind of a 
a, a U-shaped hollow that would fall off. And what they did is put water in here, and the water would go down. But what happened in a little while? It always got equal, didn't it? They wanted to equal out there a little bit there. Okay. Now, let me draw a picture of a battery. This battery is a little different than a battery on a car. This is only going to have two cells. Here's your battery. Here's your uh, positive and negative. Okay. And when you buy a battery, everybody bought, ever bought a wet battery, a uh, dry charge, a battery that's dry, but they had to add acid to it? Yeah. Okay. So what they're really doing when they, because they seal it up there, because a battery can sit on the shelf, and you can buy a battery that's two or three years old, and just sitting on a shelf, they'll go bad. So what they do, they'll put acid in it. What that does, that will pack, in the positive side, that will pack electrons, these guys right here, in that. Okay? And so there's nothing over on this side. So what they want to happen is they want these electrons want to go over here. They want to do the same thing as that tube. They want to balance out. The problem is you have this pressure right here, and it wants to get over here. That's the voltage. There's a pressure there. But when you have equal pressure on both sides of the battery, what do you have? You've got a dead battery. It's not going to work at all, is it there? Okay. So let's go back to the uh, atoms there. Let's put a bunch of, now, on the outer balance of an atom, anything that has over four on the outer balance there is a, uh, is a conductor. Anything that has less is an insulator there. So if you have extra of the electrons floating around, things can happen to it there. So, let's do this. Let's get a tube of plastic, and let's put a bunch of uh, copper atoms in there. Insu uh, the, we always want an uh, insulator, I'm not an insulator, but a... Uh, conductor and our wire. But well, probably the three best conductors are copper, gold, and silver. Okay? And uh, cars cost quite a bit, don't they? Yeah. So just actually having, if you had some gold wires, actually there are gold and silver connections in wires. Think about your airbags. You buy a car with airbags because if you happen to have an accident, you want them to deploy and protect your family, right? right. Okay, well a lot of those airbag circuits actually have gold connections there. Because you uh, buying an airbag in a car is like buying life insurance. You never want to use it, do you? Right. That's right. So, but when it, you do have an accident, you want that circuit to be active and deploy the airbags on time. So, uh, so we do. So the main wires we have is copper, of course, because it's fairly inexpensive and uh, it's a very good conductor. So what we're going to do here, we're going to put the, all these copper atoms in here. Now we just talked about the north and south pole of the magnet there. What, uh, think about this a little bit on the solar system. Let's just go backwards a little bit there and talk about the solar system. We have the sun in the middle and we have the planets that are going around. What planet is closest to the sun? Nobody knows what? Mercury, right? Come on, Jose. Yeah, Mercury. Mercury, okay. And Mercury's pretty close there. And let's think about the orbit. It goes around the sun pretty quickly, doesn't it, there? And the gravity of the sun keeps it in an orbit, right? right? Okay, so I bet you that that orbit for Mercury doesn't deviate very much. It probably is a pretty circle. Now, what's the last planet out on the uh, solar system? Pluto. Pluto. Now, Pluto got put it off the island a while back, didn't it? Well, they brought it back. Oh, they brought it back. Okay, now, you know, they did, they did find another planet further out, which takes 220 years or something to, uh, to go around the sun. But let's think about Pluto. It's way, way out there. What, what, what about that being in, what, how would it in orbit be like? Elliptical. I bet it would be there because, because the gravity, the sun, is really weak way, way out there. So I bet it kind of wanders around. But think about this. This electron, you got these atoms close together. And if you have one of these electrons that's out on the balance, kind of like Pluto, if it gets close to another atom, do you think that that, the, the positive and negative that wants to draw it in, you think maybe that that electron might jump to the next atom? It could. But all of a sudden now we've got an imbalanced atom, don't we? Unacceptable there. So what's going to happen here is that one electron is going to go over here, and this atom says, hey, I'm not copper anymore. So what's going to happen? It's going to go that electron atom to atom. Okay? So this uh, movement of these three electrons is electrical flow. Okay, we accept that? Okay. Okay, let's 
talk about uh, some terms we need to know about. Volts, that's electrical pressure, okay? That's the pressure that lives in battery positive that's trying to push those electrons out, okay? Because there again, that battery's not happy unless it has equal pressure on both sides. But we're not happy if it is, but it's dead. We always need to see those electrons go. Now when we buy a dry charge battery, putting the acid in, that puts the electrons in. And uh, if you buy a wet battery, what are they gonna do before they hand it to you usually? Charge it, right? So they're putting electrons in there, okay? Now on a car, what do we rely on to put the electrons back in battery positive? The alternator, exactly. So the voltage, the electrical pressure is trying to push those electrons out. Now, amp is the electrical flow. That's actually the, the amperage going through the, uh, the electrons going through the circuit, doing the work. Okay? Now, the other one is uh, ohms. That's a resistance to electrical flow. In just a little bit, I'll show you what happens when you don't have enough ohms in a circuit there. That's not a happy time at all. Okay? So, volts is what? Electrical pressure. Amps. The flow of it. And ohms is resistance to the flow. Okay? Now, think about a starter motor. You guys, some of you have done the, uh, the starter draw test already there. And it takes a lot of amps to turn that starter over, doesn't it? Okay? How big a wire goes down to the starter? Big wire, as big as your little finger, maybe bigger than one of your other fingers there. You know what we want to do when that starter turns over, we want a lot of amperage flow going down there, right? Okay. Now, how big is a wire going to a sensor in a computer? Real small. So to do work with electricity, we need to have different amounts of electricity move through there. So we could do it this way, okay? You got a car, it's got a trunk, it's got three batteries in it, okay? We'll put a 50 volt battery we're gonna use for the starter, a 12 volt battery we'll use for the lights, a five volt battery we'll use for the computer system, okay? So, we'll have some switches there, so we wanna start the car. We go ahead and start it, and the 50 volt battery pushes all this current through the car starts. But now we wanna turn the lights on. We gotta get rid of that 50 volt battery, put a 12 volt battery in. Life is good. But now we want the computer to work. What happens if we run 12 volts of those sensors? Not a happy time. We do a smoke check on that wire sensor right. and it goes away. So this is a different way we can do it. Rather than, because our car has, what size battery these days? 12, 12, 12 volt. 12 volt. Now when David, he remembers 6 volt batteries real, real well there. He, he's being an old guy like he is. <laughs> but, uh, well, they all have 12 volts now. We can do it a little bit differently. So let's kind of compare electricity and water. Okay, a lot of people will do this. Okay, so who lives in Apple Valley? Nobody lives in Apple Valley? Well, over by the country club, they have some big water tanks on top of there. That's where a lot of people get their water through Rancho Water Company, and you pay a lot for it there, don't you? More than gasoline sometimes, it seems like. So, what they do, they've got a well on top of that mountain there where that old that building is, and they've drilled a well down, they put a pump in the bottom of the, uh, of the uh, hole. And it's going to pump water up into the tank. And on the side of that tank, there's actually a faucet that sticks out. Okay. So, we're going to pump the water up into the tank, and there's going to be some pressure in that tank, isn't there? Okay. So that pressure is the same as what, as far as electrical terms? Voltage, correct? Okay. What would the water be? Yeah. Amperage. That's going to come out. And what I, why do you want to do something with that faucet? Say, Bob, can I put, throw you under the bus, Jose? Go ahead. Jose likes to take hikes there. So he hikes up to this tank there in Apple Valley, <coughs> and he's pretty tired when he gets up there, and he wants a glass of water. Well, he took his, he took his cup up with him, so he walks over to this faucet there, and there's all this huge tank there, and he's got his, faucet, his uh, cup under his faucet. So what's he do with that handle on the faucet? Does he open it all the way or just a little bit? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. In other words, he's putting a lot of resistance with that flow of water, which is the same as amperage and electricity, into his cup. Right. But actually, I kind of lied to you a little bit. Jose's got a job up there. It has a nice little uh, driveway up there by, by this. And Jose, once a week, has to hike up there. And first he does, he gets his water. He puts a lot of, uh, a lot of resistance in that faucet so a little bit of water comes out. But then he has to hose off that driveway. So he hooks his hose up to it, he gets out ready to go, and what's he do with the faucet now? Turns it on all the way, because there again he 
takes away resistance so more water flows. So you've got a constant 12 volts in your battery, and you, that water or electricity has to, amperage has to come out and do some work. So what controls the amount of work we do is going to be the resistance. Very, very important there. Does that make sense to you? You know what makes more sense to me? Now you, I told you guys that I'm an air, air ratchet guy, right? Okay? So let's think about this. We got a compressor over in the machine shop, and it takes the air outside, and it puts it under pressure in a tank, doesn't it? Okay? So what would that pressure be? Like 125, 130 pounds. Right. What would that be as far as electricity goes? Voltage. That's your voltage. What's the air that comes out? Yeah, sure. Amperage, okay. And what I do with my trigger here is going to be the uh, resistance there. So, you know, I talked a little bit about air ratchets are your friend, and you want to you want to control what you do with it. So what you do with the, the, the button on it here controls how much work you're going to do. So say we have a little tiny bolt we want to take out. We don't want to take it all the way because we may break it, right? So what I'm going to do here, because I only want to do a little bit of work, i got my constant air pressure, which is our voltage. The air is, of course, the amperage. And now I'm going to control how much work I do or how much air comes out. So this little tiny bolt, I'm just going to barely push it. Barely turn. So I'm getting very low, little air flow because I have a lot of resistance. Now I've got a bigger bolt, right? So I want to, what am I going to do now with my resistance? I'm going to decrease the resistance, let more air flow out. Right? Okay, that's one way to look at it there. Whoops. That was another way. Okay? I want you guys to help me on this a little bit there. Jose? You know? What's up? What's up? <laughs> you know, you're one of the easiest going guys that I've ever met, you know? Yeah, I, bet, I bet if uh, Lisa would want to go in there, Jose, I want to sit in your seat. You say, sure, no problem. Go Is that on. right? Go with the flow? Yeah. I want to congratulate you. Come on up here, buddy. <laughs> okay. Now, we know this is Jose, but we're going to rename him. We're going to call him Amp <coughs> Amperage, okay? Yeah. So, how's it going there, Amps? Good, good, good. How are you, I could, couldn't be any better. There. All right. So, just so we don't forget his name here, let's put this right uh, right here. How's that? Okay, we're going to call him Amperage. All right. Now, you guys, in fact, uh, Nevada, uh, have you met other people in the class so far? You got to know a few people, right? Yes. Is there anybody in class that's kind of pushy? <laughs> JL? Yeah, I think JL's a little pushy. Come on up here, JL. <laughs> yeah, you are pretty bossy. Be careful of that. I don't get mad, but I get even. Oh. Now, okay. we're going to do, we're going to call him Voltage. So we're going to oh. right here. So why don't you come right over here, okay? <laughs> I want you to put your hand out on... Amperage shoulder, okay? Push it, okay? Yeah, don't push too hard. The voltage is pressure, right? And amperage is the work we do there. Okay. Who else in class there? Lisa, come on up here, would you? <laughs> We're going to rename Lisa Holmes right, right over here, okay? Why don't you turn sideways? We're going to put this right on your shoulder, right here. Oops. Your tape gets out of control, doesn't it, David? <laughs> so we're going to put that right here, and you're going to turn around, you're going to put your... Uh-oh. Uh -oh. My God. Yeah. Why don't you hold that up there, so David? <laughs> okay, your, your, your uh, arm on his shoulder, okay? So, rather than we talked about air, getting work, working with air, we talked about water. So we have voltage, pushing amperage through, resistance there, right? Mm -hmm. Okay? So if we want to do a lot of work, now you're going to push 12 volts all the time, right? Yep. You're going to push amperage through. So if we want to do more work, you're going to have to back off and let more of Jose or amperage come through, right? But now we've got the car started, so we're going to turn our lights on. So what are you going to do compared to what you did for the starter to Jose? You're going to push back more, let more amperage, less amperage come through. You're going to push back. Now, we, we, how many volts did we put out to our sensors there? We know that in last semester. Give me a number. Five. Five volts. So when we, we you're going to need to put more.
push on Jose. Make, make sense at all? Any questions for the class? Well, these guys that stay up here all day as they one ask questions. Does that make sense to you? Thank you, guys. You can keep the sign. Try to please, don't forget. Yeah. Let me a little demonstration there. So in other words, I love all my children equally, both amps and ohms, but who's the most important? Amps has to do the work, but that resistance. So you know, I'm going to show you something now. <coughs> what happens when you have a circuit here? In fact, Jose, you can come up and help me again. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm coming up here. I'm just popular today, You are popular. Oh, man. Okay. Last time I seen it, somebody got shot. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, I'm just funny. what we've got here, uh, in a circuit, there's three, have to be three different uh, parts of a circuit there. You have to have a power source, which is, this is a jump box, so that's like a battery. And you have to have conductors, which is a wire. And then, of course, you have to have a load. That's your resistance in it there. So if something happens to a vehicle or a circuit, if you don't have the proper amount of resistance in a load, you're going to have a problem, right? right? So what I want you to do here, I want you to take this, and I want you to hold that right on there, tight, okay? You're, you're a strong guy, right? Hold it tight, and I'm going to come over here to the pod. wire to touch it? I want the wire to touch it, yeah. Don't be bashful. You're steady. You'll still keep going. So what I've got, I've got conductors, and I have a power source. What am I lacking in this circuit? Resistance. Resistance. Okay, so let's see what happens when we don't have the proper amount of resistance in a circuit. Oh. Oh, it's a problem. What do you think about that? That's not a happy time, is it? 